with me is my colleague Mrunal Patwardhan. She is a faculty member in DJ Sangvi College of Engineering in uh, Mumbai. And she is also a PhD research scholar in the Educational Technology Program at IIT Bombay. So she will be leading this session. So today's session is about continuing the pedagogy for effective use of ICT in engineering education. Let's look at the next topic that how we are going to do the alignment of assessment with the learning objective. First, let us try to understand the importance of this concept. You might have already gone through this scenario, so let us revisit this scenario. Imagine that the scores on digital electronics is being taught to second year electronics engineering students. Now as this course serves as a fundamental platform of to understand higher level subjects like digital system design or microprocessor, the instructor has set very clear goal or learning objectives in mind. So therefore, the instructor thinks that the learning objective should take care of preparing students in developing the ability to design digital system using logic gets. So one of the topic from this course is logic gets which we can consider as basic fundamental blocks which can be used for building up more complex systems, digital systems. So before you go for designing such systems, it is essential that we understand these basic building blocks very clear. So based on that instructional strategies were planned, lectures were delivered and as a part of curriculum, let us say that the midterm test was conducted. This midterm test mainly focused on writing truth table for the gates and finding out output for the given circuits. So for, so for example, what do you mean by truth table? What kind of behavior or functional description a typical logic gate will uh, deliver? For example, if it is an AND gate, how it will deliver or if it is an OR gate, what will be the output of this gate? That is what we mean by truth table. Or suppose there is some circuit which is made up of these logic gates then what will be the output of this circuit? So let us assume that this kind of questions were put into the midterm test which was conducted. If you are not from the domain, the way you can interpret this question is that there is some system and the inputs are given and the students had to calculate the output. So it is a fairly straightforward question, yeah. uh, calculational question and in terms of the cognitive levels that you saw yesterday, it will uh, be at the understand or apply level somewhere there. So if you are not familiar with logic gates, it is okay. But what you want to take away from this scenario is that uh, the content was taught in questions of simple calculations of input and output of outputs given input were given on the test. So uh, let us continue further. Now those who are instructors, you will clearly understand there seems to be some problem here. So what kind of problem we are trying to find out here? Let us see. So since the learning objective set by the instructor was students developing ability to design circuit, obviously students got training or they studied the content to develop this ability. This is actually very much in line with maybe uh, course level learning objectives or unit level learning objectives. You have already learnt about what is the difference between course level learning objectives or unit level learning objectives. So what has happened is students studied the course content so as to develop ability to design systems. However, when they appeared for the midterm test, they were not assessed for the same. So here the objective or the outcome that was expected from students was that they should be able to develop or design a system. Instead of that, they were assessed only for finding out some functional aspects of the system which is already designed or already given to them. So what is the impression generally students will carry? The exams do not assess what we learn. Many times we come across this scenario as an instructor. So many times we get to hear these comments from students. Whatever we studied did not appear in the exam or it could be the other way around also. Whatever was asked in this exam that we did not study. So now it is quite possible here that though the preparation of the student or what is whatever was the expectation of the student that was comparatively at higher level, but the assessment test that was set that was comparatively at lower level. 
So it is quite possible that students might have scored very good grades in this exam. But unfortunately, here the scenario is good grades achieved by the students in such exams, they need not indicate good learning. And this is very detrimental to the process of teaching learning. We want not just good grades, but we want those good grades to be indication of good learning also. So now, what is the solution? How can we avoid these problems? So let's try to understand, is there anything as an instructor that we can do to find out solution for this problem? Because this problem is very severe as it is affecting the success or effectiveness of the teaching learning process itself. So in fact, you know, the answer lies with us. We already know the answer. So if we do a quick overview of last two days session, we will automatically come to the solution. So let's try to go through various aspects that you have been studying for last two days. This is what we call as triangle of effective learning. As you could see, the entire teaching learning process here is you could consider this in the form of tripod and which is resting on these three legs that is learning objectives, instructional activities and assessment. Now I guess we all are quite familiar and comfortable with this phrase called as learning objectives. It is a very scientific way of defining what are our expectations from students. How are we going to make the students learn a typical topic and that is how we try to write these learning objectives which are student centric, specific and measurable statements in the form of students will be able to do whatever we are expecting them to do. The second aspect here presented is instructional activities. As an instructor you might have come across this situation that we do not teach in the same manner every day for every topic. So we have these variations. So maybe sometimes you would prefer making use of blackboard, sometimes it could be by making use of visualizations with appropriate strategies or it could be some active learning strategies in terms of peer instruction or think pair share and many more. If it is a project, you would like students to debate or give presentations related to that. So appropriate instructional activities are also important part of this teaching learning process. And now here we come to this aspect, the another important aspect of it that is what we call as an assessment. Now before we formally get introduced to what do you mean by assessment, just let us try to understand that the success or effectiveness of teaching learning process is completely dependent on these three important aspects, learning that is learning objectives, instructional activities and assessment. So let us try to understand more about this assessment part today. What do we mean by assessment? Now we are absolutely not unfamiliar with this phrase. We try to assess students many times. To give you some examples, you are going to start new topic in the class and you ask students, do you know this? So what are you trying to do at that moment? You are trying to evaluate or you are trying to assess students prior knowledge so that they can understand the new topic that you are about to introduce you conduct test or you are assessing their experimentation abilities when students are performing certain experiments in the lab. If it is a project based examination, you are trying to understand how students are developing solution for the problem that they have identified. So in short, we have been using, making use of assessments every now and then. So if at all we have to summarize, we could simply say that it is just a process of collecting evidence of how much students have learned. Let me just slightly rephrase this statement or let me say assessment should reveal how well students have learned what we want them to learn. Let me emphasize on this last few words of this statement that is what we want them to learn. These words are very important because that is what we are going to assess. Now here is the question, how do we know what we want them to learn? In fact, we have already answered this question that this is nothing but this is what we have defined by means of learning objectives. So learning objectives are clearly trying to tell us that this is what we want our students to learn. So just a quick recap of what you have already studied for last two days. So we know that these learning objectives could be at different levels starting right from recall level up to increasing order going up to create level. 
Now, when you look at this or what you have, you must have experienced this in uh, earlier sessions. So, let us answer this very simple question. Are all learning objectives at the same cognitive level? To make it more simple, is it expected from students that they take same amount of efforts every time they try to all answer some question? I am sure the answer is no and everybody agrees to that. Because within a unit, within a chapter, within a syllabus, within a course also, we try to take students right from lower level to higher level. The efforts that students are putting, we try to increase them in an incremental order. So we know that these learning objectives certainly are not at same level. So now, let us tie up all these things together. We know that students should be studying or they should be focusing on learning objectives or learning objectives are the one which are making us understand what students must be studying. So, and when we know that these learning objectives are not at the same level, here is the question that we need to answer. Then how do we assess students for the task at different cognitive levels? So if you try to answer this question intuitively, the answer is going to be when learning objectives are at different cognitive levels, our assessment questions should also must be of different levels. Now please understand here we are talking about two different aspects. The first aspect that we are trying to highlight here is that all assessment questions should not be at same cognitive level because basically they are trying to assess the knowledge that is gained due to learning objectives which are at different levels. So look at this scenario, you have learning objectives at different levels, you have assessment questions at different levels. So I guess it is very important to understand the second aspect that there must be matching between the level of assessment question and learning objective. So this is what we are trying to highlight in today's session. So here are our learning objectives set for covering up a certain content. We are trying to come up with good quality assessment question. So what is more important is alignment between assessment questions and learning objective. So the whole objective of this today's session is how we are going to align assessment to learning objective. Because if this mismatch gets created, it is not certainly beneficial for teaching learning process. In fact, that is what we have seen in the very first scenario that we took up today morning. So now let us try to focus on this issue that how are we going to align assessment to the learning objectives. So I guess we all are quite familiar with this that what are learning objectives. Here are the six learning object level cognitive levels of learning objectives and their corresponding description. Okay. So before we formally now start understanding how do we do this alignment, let us define learning objective for this session. So these are the learning objectives that we have set for today's session. By the end of this session, you will be able to classify assessment questions as per Bloom's taxonomy. You will be able to generate questions for different levels of Bloom's taxonomy and you will be able to align the assessment questions to their respective learning objectives. So let us start with this activity. So the first here you could see that there is a question that has been posed. Now how do we do this alignment can be very well understood if we try to take some example and from some domain and we try to generate various questions and learning objectives within that domain or for the given topic. So the topic which I have selected for this understanding is a very basic topic that everybody must should be able to understand that is Ohm's law. So I guess irrespective of your background, everybody will be able to understand uh, this topic content and how we try to align the assessment questions to the learning objectives that we have set. I guess there might be some faculty members from humanities also, but when I am explaining the question, I will try to give you some general description about the process so that you will be able to apply that effectively in your own domain as well. So let us look at this question. The question says what the unit of resistance <coughs> is dash. So it is a fill in the blank kind of question where 
it is expected that learner should write down or student should write down what is the unit of resistance. Okay. So, let us first try to understand what is the cognitive level of this question. So, I think it will be very easy for us to understand the cognitive level of this question that this question is at recall level, the very first level in Bloom's taxonomy. So, where what do we expect students to do? It is expected that students have already learnt the matter or the content and by posing this question we are just trying to students to recall it from their memory. So, it is basically we are just trying to make students remember what they have already learnt. So, here maybe it is expected that students should just write down that the unit of resistance is zero. So, if you read this description for cognitive level, you can understand that it is basically recalling the facts, remembering previously learnt material. Now, what you see here on the slide in front of you, what we call them as action verbs. So, whenever we pose assessment questions, obviously we try to make use of appropriate verbs. Now, there is a good way of understanding which cognitive level the question belongs to. So, here are some examples that have been given here. For example, label, name, reproduce. Let us try to make use of some of these verbs and try to find out whether we can create questions at the first cognitive level as per Bloom's taxonomy. For example, state Newton's third law. That could be a question at the basic recall level. Now, if you go back to this, you might be wondering that here there is no verb that is action verb that is appearing. So, in a way it is silent here, but I could have just simply framed the question like state what is the unit of resistance. So, I guess this should become clear to you that even if you find absence of action verb, you could understand the intention of the question and that will give you clear idea at what level, at what cognitive level the question is. Or maybe you could say name some of the systems from human body. So, where you could understand that basically the cognitive activity that students will be doing while answering this question is recalling something from their memory. So, right now we did this exercise. For example, I posed one question for you. We try to understand at what cognitive level the question is. And based on that, we are trying to come up with some generic list of action verbs which can make uh, help us in creating questions at that cognitive level. We will be doing this exercise for all the six levels. Before that, let me just give you a very important instruction here. This list is not exhaustive, the action verb list what you see here. For example, here some 10, 15, 11 action verbs have been put up. So, this is not an exhaustive list. What I mean to say is, it is not necessary that every question which has this action verb must fall into cognitive level 1 or vice versa. If there is one question which has an action verb which is not in this list, that means the question cannot belong to cognitive level 1. So, basically you when you try to find out cognitive level of the question, these action verbs certainly do help us. But we also need to understand what has been the intention of this question. What kind of cognitive challenge we are putting in front of students or what kind of cognitive activities students are expected to do for answering this question. So, let us try to do a similar exercise now for the next cognitive level. Now, look at this question. The question says, which of the following will cause the current to an electrical circuit to decrease? Choose all that apply and certain answers have been given. So, there could be one answer or there could be more than one answers for this question. Now, let us just try to analyze this question. Now, you can really appreciate and understand that this question seems to be little at higher level as compared to the first question. So, here when we say which of the following will cause the current through an electrical circuit to decrease and the, in the answer you find either voltage or resistance. That means, here we are talking about some relationship that exists between voltage, current and resistance and beyond that we want students to understand the interplay between these parameters. So, we are moving beyond just remembering something from the memory, we are trying to understand or we are trying to assess students comprehension about the term. 
So suppose if Ohm's law is one relation which tries to understand or judge the interplay between voltage, current and resistance, we are really trying to understand by means of this question that have students understood what exactly will happen if you vary one of the parameters or one of these three factors, what impact it will have on another parameters. Okay. So this is something is uh, what we can say that this question as you could say this question is at understand cognitive level. So it moves beyond just simply memorizing whatever is the mathematical formula for Ohm's law. It moves beyond that. It makes students think about it. It makes students understand the relationship that these three parameters have with respect to each other. So here as you could see in the description they are trying to understand meaning of this concept of Ohm's law and not only that. They might be able to paraphrase that in their own words or they might be able to explain some phenomena, some behavior by taking help of Ohm's law. Now let us come to these action verbs for understand level question. So for example, here you could see illustrate, rephrase, substitute, convert. So for example, if it is a something is given to you let us say in polar coordinate system and you have been asked to convert that into some rectangular coordinate system. So if at all student is going to do this exercise or if at all students is trying to understand this two coordinate system, it is expected that student must have understood basic what do you mean by coordinate system. Let us now move on to this third cognitive level. So let us see what is this question. Use Ohm's law equation to provide numerical answers to the following question. So the question is an electrical device with a resistance of 3 ohm will allow a current of 4 amperes to flow through it if a voltage drop of dash volts is impressed across the device. Now let us try to spend some time in understanding this question itself first of all. So as you could see when student is trying to answer this question. It is already known to the students or students already have this linkage that resistance is measured by or the unit of resistance is zone or current is measured by means of amperes. So the question what we had earlier put for remember level or recall level. So that level of knowledge is already expected in this question. Not only that, suppose when student is trying to answer this question, it is also expected that student must know what is the relation between these three parameters. So obviously here one has to make use of Ohm's law. So that Ohm's law should be used and how that should be applied in this new context. That is something is expected from the students. So Ohm's law is a generic behavior of some phenomena. Now here a typical scenario or situation is given. For example, an electrical device with resistance so and so, with current so and so and you have been asked to find out something else. So whatever knowledge student has gathered in the process of understanding Ohm's law now need to be applied in this new situation. So we can understand that this typical question not only is taking care of the early, very first cognitive level that is recall, but it is also expected that in order to answer this question student must have come up the second level that is understand level. So then what is this cognitive level of this question? I am sure you all must have guessed it correctly. This question is at apply cognitive level. So let us read the description that itself will make the positioning very clear. So what it says use knowledge in a new situation that is what precisely we have seen in this question. Knowledge about Ohm's law was used in this new situation where certain parameters were given to us. So it may involve rules, methods, laws and principles. As we know rules, methods, laws these are generic description of certain behavior and they are trying to apply them in the new context in the new situation. So these are some of the examples of action verbs that we can use while posing apply level questions. or questions which are at apply cognitive level. So you could see here that you can understand when student is trying to do a task at apply level, student has already achieved you can say mastery into the first two levels that is remember level and understand level. So that is how we say that lower cognitive levels of room they 
are subsumed into the higher cognitive levels. So by now you are all very familiar with this activity of polling or voting. Uh, it says clicker question on the slide and the reason it says so on the slide is that uh, the reason it says clicker question is sometimes in class we do these polling activities using clickers. So this is in fact uh, slightly uh, th this idea we haven't talked about much. Uh, in the polling activities what we normally do is we pose a multiple choice question and it's usually conceptual where students have to reason through the various choices and make a choice about their uh, about their answer. And then we have them vote. A low tech way of doing it is what you've been doing it, you raise your hand, you raise your fingers and so on. In educational technology, it's actually, there's actually a tool called clickers, which is very similar to the ones you may have seen on uh, Kaun Banega Karodpati. And using this tool, in fact, the choices of each student can be gathered in real time and a teacher can see a histogram. So this is one example where the technology tool and the pedagogical strategy, in fact, can be, uh, they go hand in hand very well together. This doesn't mean that you can't use polling if you don't have the tool, because as you, as you have seen in the last two days, we've been using uh, the polling strategy, at least within your classrooms, just using the tools of your fingers. Okay, so now let's come back to the actual question. Uh, we'll put it, we'll start the polling in a second. But I want you to read the question on the slide first because the diagrams, we couldn't put it on the polling uh, question. So what this question says is the question gives four questions as the choices, A, B, C, D. And it asks you to decide which of these following questions, assessment questions, belongs to the understand level. The first choice is some symbols of electrical circuits are given and the student is asked to identify the symbols. In the second choice, two wires are given of different materials and students are asked which has more resistance. In the third question, students are asked about the current passing through a resistor. And in the fourth question, uh, again, it's a question where students have to do some numerical calculation of a resistance. So we're going to start the polling in a moment. Okay, you can start the polling now. Okay, it looks like most of you have answered and Rinal will explain what the level actually is. So, in order to understand what's the correct answer, let's go to the uh, question and the answers those were given to us. So, the question was which of the following questions belong to understand level? So, let's look at the first question, identify the following symbols. I think everybody knows that this question belongs to recall level where it's already known to the students that these could be the symbols for maybe say voltage or resistance and they are just recalling it from their memory. Let's look at the question C and D first. So what is the question C? It says that what current passing to 10 km resistor will produce a voltage of 8 volt across it. And the fourth question, a potential difference of 10 volt appears across the ends of a resistor when 5 ampere current flows through it. Now here we can say that in these two questions, it is the understanding about Ohm's law it needs to be applied in a new situation. So maybe we will like to put these two questions in apply category. Some of you have answered C as the question of understand label, that there might be slight overlap. But let us look at this question B. It says that two wires, one of copper and another of iron are of same length and same radius which will have more resistance. So it is the whole understanding or comprehension about Ohm's law and the parameters which are deciding the resistance of a typical uh, conductor that is all is getting challenged in while answering this question. So we would say that the answer for the or out of this A, B, C and D, it is the second question more belongs to understand cognitive level. Let us now move on. So, so far we have covered first three levels of from uh, Bloom's taxonomy that is recall or remember, understand and apply. Now let us move on to higher order levels that is analyze, analyze um, evaluate and create. It is definitely going to be a very interesting exercise for all of you. So here is the question. 
some four circuits have been given and what is asked is find out the, what method has been used in each of these to control the current in the circuit. So, let us read the question. In the circuit shown in the diagram A, B, C and D, what method has been used to control the current in the circuit? So, if you try to understand or if you try to look at this question, it is definitely obviously expect students to know Ohm's law or the relation between voltage, current and uh, uh, resistance. It moves beyond that, that there is some typical scenario that is given to us in which we need to apply them. But I would say it further moves beyond that because here is in order to answer this question students need to analyze this situation very minutely. They need to understand how these things have been done differently in all the four circuits. Every situation has to be properly seen and then only the students will be able to answer this question. So, this brings us to the next cognitive level this is what is analyzed. So, as the description goes while analyzing a typical scenario or while posing a question or answering a question for analyzed cognitive level. We separate whole into parts until the structure of whole and relationship between part is very clear. So, maybe that exercise will be required here to find out how much is has been the current in the circuit or what will happen in scenario A and scenario B or how scenario C or D has been different from A and B. So, all that has to be worked out very clearly to answer this question. So, this is what is the fourth level of from Bloom's taxonomy that is analyze. So, here are some verbs action verbs which might help us in posing questions or writing questions for analyze level. Now, sometimes especially in engineering domain we find that this apply level and analyze level they slightly merge or they slightly overlap. And you therefore, you might find that some of the action verbs might be common in uh, apply level as well as um, analyze level. So, again as I have said previously it is you really need to understand what has been the intention of this question and based on that we have to take this decision which cognitive level the question belongs to. This is again another interesting question let us look at it. Which of the given circuits can be used to drive 7 segment display? I guess many of us are familiar what, what we mean by 7 segment display or maybe what we see on uh, railway platform as an indicator. So, where we are able to see or uh, the alphabets can be seen by means of a display that is creating using LEDs. Now, so in this there are two circuits which are given. And assume that we already know what is the value of voltage or resistances are known to us. And what is asked here is which of the given circuits can be used to drive 7 segment display. So, it is very obvious that some kind of decision is expected from students. But what is more important to understand here is on what basis the decision should be taken that is not very obvious. So, that also has to come from students. So, when we say that the circuit is to be used to drive 7 segment display that means in a way though it is not explicitly mentioned here in the question the people from domain can understand that it means that it should not be allowing more than what is required the amount of current that should flow from the uh, 7 segment display otherwise if it is exposed to excessive amount of current the display is going to get burnt out. So, so that means we are trying to avoid this situation. So, this is the sort of criteria that we are setting for evaluating or taking the decision of this evaluation. So, based on that one has to work out how much current circuit A will produce, how much current circuit B will produce and then based on that we will have to find out that which of these two circuits will be a safe option to drive 7 segment display. So, what is getting highlighted when we discuss about this question or from the discussion about this question that it is some judgment or some kind of decision is expected in this question. And also as I have said the criteria also has to be explained or also has to be thought about it. So, it is not very obvious that the so student has to think about what kind of criteria be should be applied in order to take the decision so that this question can be answered. So, that is how it leads us to the next cognitive level which we call as evaluate. 
So, as you could see in the description, here it is expected in this kind of question that there must be some judgment based on some criteria or suppose somebody is saying or that circuit A is a better option. It is we are trying to ask or we are asking for justification. What has been the justification for this decision? On what basis this decision was made? So, these kind of cognitive activities are expected from students when students are answering this kind of question. So, again I guess it will become very clear to you that we when we are at evaluate level we are taking care of all lower levels of blooms. For example, it is right from recall, then understand, apply, analyze and then we are coming to this evaluate level where students are going through all these lower levels and they are becoming now expert to answer the question at evaluate level. So, generally you will find these kind of verbs when we are trying to pose question at evaluate level. For example, compare, evaluate, criticize, conclude. So, where you could see that from literal meaning of these verbs also tries to indicate that we are trying to come up with some kind of judgment, some kind of decision by making use of these words. Let us come to the next question. It says using Ohm's law construct a voltage divider to obtain x voltage from battery bank of y voltage. Now, x and y could be just numerical values. So, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to understand the general nature of the question. So, the question says that it is I would say it is a little open ended question. It says using Ohm's law construct a voltage divider. So, here is some new creation that is expected from student. What kind of creation? It is a voltage divider circuit. The situation is given to us that here is a battery bank from which we want certain amount of voltage. Right? So, now it is completely students freedom that students will have to design this circuit. So, whatever knowledge they have gathered so far related to Ohm's law, applying Ohm's law in new situation, making decisions about whether x circuit will be better or y circuit will be better all that will be taken care and using all these things it is expected that students will make this circuit which should fulfill the requirement that is given in this question. So, here you could see that it is a completely new creation that is coming out of this cognitive activity. Okay. So, no doubt we try to put this question at the highest order or highest level from Bloom's taxonomy that is at create level. So, in a way you could see here that it will generate new ideas, products right and it will be sort of a synthesized activity. So, number of things will be put together so as to make this product. Now, many times we find that the answers to create question, create level of question they are not straightforward or they are not unique. When you give this question to a class of 40 students, it is not necessary that every student will come up with the same circuit. That is a freedom or that is a sort of creativity that you are you want in this kind of question. And therefore, uh, these new ideas whatever will get generated they need not be unique and every student might come with different kind of solution. The final object or final goal of this question has to be achieved that whatever is the task that is given to them that must get fulfilled. So, here is a list of action verbs which we can use for uh, posing or creating create level questions. So, the very obvious ones are for example, design, combine or synthesize, develop. So, all these questions or all these action verbs they try to take care of the questions at uh, the highest level of as per uh, Bloom's taxonomy that is create level. Okay, so here is one more question. What is given here is a graph of voltage versus current. So, the vertical axis is voltage and the horizontal axis is current and there are two straight line graphs A and B. Again, the question for you is which cognitive level is the question in the slide. So, this voltage versus current graph is given for a combination of two resistors and what is asked is which of these two is the parallel combination. So, we are going to start the polling. All you need to see is that A is the graph at the bottom, the straight line at the bottom, B is the straight line at the top and the vertical axis is voltage and the horizontal axis is current. The question that the students have to answer is, is A or B the parallel combination? 
the question that you have to answer is, is it an understand level question, apply level question, analyze level question, create level question, and so on. So let's just go to the poll. OK, it looks like 95% of you, that is all centers except one, have said that the answer, on this, the answer to the question on the slide as to which cognitive level it is, is analyze. Now, all of you are right. But I'm not sure whether you said it's analyze because there's this little word analyze, the answer is given at the bottom, or whether you actually, I, I hope you actually uh, were able to uh, reason through the answer. So let's do a quick, another quick activity after this. So sometimes when we do a clicker question or a polling question, what is more important is the reason behind, reason why a student or a participant chose the answer. It's not just the answer itself, because it's a multiple choice question, and sometimes you don't know why somebody chose an answer. Did they guess? Did they just take a choice, take a chance, and so on? So what we'd like you to do in pairs is reason out why this is an analyze level question. And if it's an analyze level question, what are the pieces of knowledge at the lower levels that is required? Because one point that we've been making so far is that every higher level question uh, subsumes the lower levels. That is, for a student to be able to answer this question, the student have the knowledge in the apply level, understand level, and recall level. So what is the piece of knowledge in the apply level that the student needs to answer this question? What knowledge in the understand level and what knowledge in the recall level does the student need to understand this question? So what I'd like all of you to do actually here is to, uh, let's do one thing. Pair up and either pair up or form groups of three and make sure that there is one person from the domain and one person who's not in the domain. So somebody who's not in the domain also can follow why this is an analyzed question. So in your group of two or three, let at least one person be in the domain and at least one person be from outside of this domain. And do a quick discussion and explanation of why this is an analyze level question. Once you do that, uh, the reasons why this is an analyze level question or what other knowledge pieces are required, you can tell your coordinator and let's see, maybe the coordinator can share a few reasons with us on chat. So let's spend about five minutes on this activity. Okay, so we are going through the answers that uh, you have been um, posting on it. And um, it, the reason why you are saying that it's an analyzed level, that has been uh, correct. So let's just try to quickly uh, understand what the scenario is. Looking at the question, first of all, students need to understand, students have to break down this problem into a number of chunks or number of smaller submodules, we would say. So it is, students must know what is Ohm's law. They must be also able to understand uh, the relation, uh, how it varies between voltage and current when you are making use of Ohm's law. Apart from that, here there is a parallel combination. So understanding what impact a parallel combination of resistor has, or how do you find out equivalent resistance of a parallel combination of resistance. So all these are individual modules which are coming together in order to answer this question. So in a way, in order to answer this question, first of all, students are breaking this into these subcomponents. They are solving them individually, and that is taking them to the final answer. So that's how we say that this question belongs to um, analyze level. Now let's go ahead. So now, so far, let's see what we have covered. We first of all talked about cognitive levels of the questions. We talked about six cognitive levels and we have seen how you can come up with questions at six different cognitive levels. So in a way this exercise will help you in identifying correct cognitive level for the given question. But if you remember the main objective of this session is to talk about alignment of assessment with L. So how we are going to take care of this? So now let us come to that aspect. So what we will be doing now, we will be posing three clicker questions. So in these questions, what you will find is the basic answer what is expected from you is, is the assessment aligned with LO? Which means you have been given with a learning objective, you have also been given with a question right? and you have to make this decision. 
is this assessment aligned with it so obviously in order to answer this question first of all you will have to identify what is the cognitive level of the learning objective similarly you will find out at what cognitive level the question is and then you will try to answer this question that whether these two are aligned or no so the answer what we are expecting from you is simply in the form of yes or no are they aligned or not but you will not be able to answer yes or no unless and until you identify what has been the cognitive levels of the learning objective as well as of the question so here is the first question that you see here on your screen so learning objective is students should be able to draw vi graph for ohmic and non ohmic registers and here is a question which says which of the given is a characteristic of non ohmic registers okay so we'll start polling you have to simply answer yes or no and then we will try to understand uh, what answer is correct and why it is correct okay so we already received your responses now let's see what is the uh, correct answer so if you look at this cognitive level of this learning objective it is at understand level similarly even the question also is at understand level so because here what is expected in by means of learning objective that students should understand that there is a linear relationship between voltage and current in case of ohmic resistance whereas in case of non ohmic resistance it's a non linear relationship and that is something that should be understood by means of its graphical representation also so this is what is expected by the learning objective that has been set by this instructor and based on that if you look at the question the question is also trying to assess students for the same learning objective so the question is trying to understand whether students have understood that the linear relationship which is shown by a straight line when it is uh, when current and voltage relations are, are plotted or if it is a non linear curve what you could see in the second graph so are students able to understand this and they are able to come up with this conclusion that it whether it's a ohmic which one is the ohmic resistance and which one is the non ohmic resistance characteristic so here as far as this question is concerned we could say that there was alignment between the learning objective that was set by the instructor and the similar the, the question that was posed by the instructor let's move on to next question now the format for this clicker question is also going to remain the same you are saying a learning objective you are also saying a question okay so your answer should be in the form of yes or no so before that again try to find out what will be the cognitive level for the learning objective what will be the cognitive level for the question and then answer this question so we start polling okay so again most of you have answered this very correctly so here we could see that there is misalignment between the learning objective and the question that was set so you could see from the learning objective that the learning objective was set for or was written for apply level whereas here the question has been set for create level so here this is an example where we have lower level learning objective but the question that has been posed uh, is at higher level so this is an example where we could see the misalignment and definitely students will not be very happy when this kind of misalignment is happening in the assessment process let's move on to the next question now so again you are seeing a learning objective and question written uh, now try to answer uh, whether there is an alignment between the learning objective and the question that has been posed over here okay. so let's start polling okay so let's try to see what has been the cognitive levels of this learning objective and the uh, question so let's look at the question write mathematical statement for ohms law so it's a something which has been understood by the students or ohms law which is known to the students so they are simply trying to write down the relation between voltage current and resistance whereas if we look at this learning objective it it was students should be able to calculate the resistance in the circuit from experimental observations of potential difference and current if for some people if the learning objective is not clear let me explain that so suppose some experiment is being conducted in which the readings of voltage and current have been taken 
Now in these readings when they are plotted graphically based on that looking at the uh, slope of the relationship between the voltage and current characteristic, it is expected that students should be able to calculate what will be the value of resistance. Now for this kind of learning objective when we are simply putting a question that write mathematical statement for Ohm's law, this is something is uh, definitely learning objective is at higher level and question is at lower level. Because the learning objective is expecting that students must understand or students should know what is Ohm's law. They should also know how to plot this observation uh, which have been taken of potential difference and current on in a graphical manner. How do they find out slope of the relationship that is or characteristic between um, of potential difference and current and based on that they should be able to find out, they should be able to calculate what will be the value of resistance. So all this was expected when instructors set this as a learning objective whereas if you look at the question it is simply trying to ask students to recall what has been the mathematical relationship which is stated by Ohm's law. So we would say that this is again another example where there is misalignment what is happening. Um, the learning objective is at higher level but the question is at lower level. In the earlier example it was opposite scenario, learning objective was at um, lower level and the question was at higher level. So we need to avoid both these situations because both these situations are not really good for teaching learning process. In the first case when learning objective is at lower level and the question posed is at higher level, students lose their confidence, they think that they are not able to understand whatever was taught or they are not able to correlate with whatever was studied and what is being asked in the assessment test. Whereas for this question you could see that the by setting this learning objective we are really creating high expectation as far as content is concerned. But when we try to set questions at lower cognitive level. In a way we are sometimes it might be demotivating for students who are really enthusiastic about this learning process. So the it is very important as an instructor that we understand learning objectives and when we are setting our assessment um, we try to see or we try to pay attention to this issue of alignment between learning objectives and the assessment test or the question that we are creating. Okay, so, so far at least in the last one hour we have looked at uh, the need for aligning objectives and questions. We have done that over the last three days but in especially in the last three polling questions you saw exactly what things happen when either the question is at a higher level than the uh, objective or the objective is at a higher level than the question. So you may be wondering in this whole exercise that if you remember this slide triangle of effective learning, we talked a lot about aligning objectives and assessment. But what happened to the instructional activities? We never, so far we haven't talked, so far as in, in the last one hour we didn't talk about it. So one reason we didn't do that or one reason we start with looking at objectives and assessment other than the fact that they absolutely must be aligned is that there is this process of uh, instructional design and this, there is this theory called backward design. And what backward design says is that you start with the objectives. Okay, you define the objectives which come from your syllabus, which come from uh, what the students should be able to do after they graduate, after they finish your class and so on. And then the teacher should actually think about the assessment questions which will make sure that these objectives are in fact attained. And only after the teacher knows how the students will be assessed only then should the teacher plan the instructional activities. So it is backward in the sense that normally we go and we teach something in class in a traditional classroom. We do not explicitly think of objectives and say the week before the exam or so we say oh I have to write an exam question let us see what I can do. So there are problems with that approach in terms of aligning assessment and objectives and also in terms of aligning assessment and the instruction. So what is recommended is as we have been repeating at least for now maybe the 58th time, start with objectives, then actually sit and write assessment questions, create a bank of assessment questions at various levels for various topics. Then when you have to teach a particular class, 
you know the objective, you design your instructional activity accordingly and you also have an idea of the type of questions that you would expect the students to answer. So if you expect the students to answer, evaluate or create level questions, then the activities that you do in class also must be similar, uh, must be at the evaluate or create level so that students are actually able to do so. If you expect students to answer problems at the apply or analyze level, then the activities must involve some tutorials and problem solving sessions where students get practice in doing uh, apply level or analyze level problems. So that's why it's a good idea to start with these two. In order to follow this backward design, we need this question bank. So here is an exercise that we do usually in course design. We call it blooming all the way because it's actually, it, it, it starts at the lower level of bloom. And what it is, is that a teacher or in fact a group of teachers create a series of questions in a given topic that go from the recall level all the way to the create level. What's important is that we keep, we stick to the topic. So if we are doing logic gates, we stick to logic gates. We don't go to some higher level uh, topic or we don't go to a more advanced level topic. So within each topic, the teacher creates questions at all levels so that a question bank gets created in various topics and finally when we are planning instructional activities as well as when we are trying to frame our exam, we have the series of questions which are tagged with different Bloom's levels. So what I will do next is show you examples of such questions in three different topics. I have just chosen three different topics for which we have questions and uh, again like I did in one of the sessions yesterday, I will just pose these slides and if hopefully one or the other is something that will be familiar to you. I think the first one is going to be familiar to almost all science or engineering teachers because this is from the school level topic of coordinate geometry. So math school level coordinate geometry, it's still coordinate geometry finding Euclidean distances. So I will spend, I will just leave the slide on and what I would like you to do is go through these questions and pay attention to the fact of how one question gradually goes to the higher level question but at the same time no new topic, no new content has been added. It is still about calculating Euclidean distances between two coordinates. So let me just leave this on for a couple of minutes. There are a couple of things that you should do when you are reading such questions. Firstly, you should be able to argue why a question has been put in a certain level. For example, look at questions at the apply level and at the analyze level. Both look like problems where students have to calculate a distance between two points. So why is this question, the distance between Rashtrapati Bhavan and uh, Red Fort an apply level question and this level an analyze level question? So when you think about it, if you have, I mean, you, you should be able to give answers to this. So the way you should start thinking about it is let's look at the apply level question and see what are the steps that the student has to do in order to answer the apply level question. So in the apply level question, two points are given, whose coordinates are given. The numerical coordinates of these two points are known. And the student has to take the Euclidean distance formula, plug in the values of these coordinates, do the calculation, actually compute the distance and say that that is the distance between these two points. So it is a question where a calculation has to be done based on a formula. So the formula has to be applied to this situation. On the other hand, in the analyze level question, what is actually given is the diagram is not shown in this uh, on this slide, but there is a diagram where four points A, B, C, D are given. I will just show it with my pointers. A is here, B is here, C may be here and D is there. So this person Ram flies from A to B to C to D and on the diagram the four coordinates will be shown. And the question is what is the distance between, how far is he from the starting point? So the student has to look at the diagram and be able to analyze, be able to break, break down the diagram. So the student has to in fact think and see that there are four coordinates, four points. Which ones should I look, which ones should I use to calculate the distance? 
So there is some breaking down of this diagram, this four point diagram which has to be done before any calculation has to be done. The student has to realize that well if I want to find out the distance from my starting point, even though this person has flown to four different points, all I need to do is to choose the coordinates of the last point D and the first point A. So this sort of looking deeper into the diagram, figuring out what all is in the diagram, what to throw away and what to keep is the hallmark of an analyze level problem. So let me actually just go back to the definition of the analyze level. Um, so if you look at the definition of analyze, it says separate a whole into parts. So we had a diagram, that's the whole, the diagram had four points, that's the whole. Separate it into parts, what are the parts? The coordinate of each point is one part, the distance between two points is another part. So realize that the whole, the big diagram is made up of these different parts and then do so until the structure of the whole and the relationship between the parts is clear. So relationship between the parts here is that in order to calculate how far he is from the starting point, only the relationship between A and E is needed. So though, that's how you can differentiate between an apply level and an analyze level question that there has to be some dissection, some uh, breaking apart of a complex structure which needs to be done before ap applications start. So even before any calculation or any formula is applied, this sort of let's see where to apply the formula, uh, let's see uh, to which points I have to apply the formula, these decisions have to be taken by the student. And that, that's how you write up analyze level questions. So I hope it's clear why this is apply and why this is analyze. And uh, I'd like to make one more point, uh, I just want to note one more point here. That this last create level question uh, assumes in this particular school where this problem was used, uh, Scratch is a programming language that is very intuitive, it's a graphical programming language. And in uh, the computer class in many of these schools people use Scratch. So the teacher knew that students know Scratch, so there's one, one additional assumption that's being made here that students are familiar with Scratch. If that assumption doesn't hold good, because I'm, I'm expecting some of you to say what is this new thing called Scratch. If that assumption doesn't hold good, what you can ask students to do is to say that suppose the teacher were to give the values of any two coordinates, of any two points, how will you make, how will you write an algorithm, not necessarily a program but a pseudocode, an algorithm to output the distance. So assume there is a robot, how will you get the robot to find out the distance between the points, write the steps that the robot needs to take. So it is a very general uh, pseudocode kind of problem, you, you can do something like that. Okay, the next two slides I will uh, simply flash because these are specialized uh, topics. The next one is in manufacturing engineering from mechanical domain and the topic is machining. All the questions begin with a given engineering drawing such as a hammer head or some engineering drawing is given and six questions are given. There is a typo here, the understand level question accidentally has not uh, been written. So what I will do is I will just type it in the chat window and when we upload the slides we will make sure that this typo is corrected. If you are not from the domain at all, by the way I am not from this domain, I do not understand the specific topic. But what I would pay attention to here is one is you can look at the action verbs. Secondly you can try to see in abstract what the question is asking. So the first question is asking to identify some properties of the diagram, tolerance is some sort of property. So you look at the diagram and the student is say, should simply be able to identify that this is the property. The second question is explain the utility of some object in a drill bit. So a reason has to be given as to why this object is there. Apply level is a calculation of a speed, so as engineers we are very familiar with calculation problems. Analyze level is determining the optimum number of some quantity. Why this is an analyze level question again is before you do the calculation of this quantity, 
the student has to be able to say okay, what does it mean for this quantity to be optimal. So they have to look at this operation, break it up and say okay, for it to be optimal some such some criteria some property has to hold and then do the calculation. The evaluate level again is fairly understandable here the student has to decide if this above operation can be done on a lathe machine. So the student has to determine the criteria of to do this operation does the lathe machine does it have all the required parameters does it have all the required criteria and so on. So when you read these questions you have to try to understand uh, as Mrinal mentioned earlier that in abstract what is the student being asked to do and wh what are the steps that the student ha have to do to answer the question. So I'll just leave this on for 30 seconds then I'll show you the last example. The last set of example is from logic gates again I'll just leave this on if anybody has any questions please put it up on chat and right after this there's a big activity which I'd like to explain before breaking for tea. Okay so here uh, let me sit let me comment on one uh, chat question we have been getting a couple of requests would it be possible to give an example in civil domain or in some other domain. So as we have been saying for the last three days it is uh, this is actually this is a limitation but it is something that we are trying to handle at the optimal level we cannot give examples in all possible domains. So we are trying to do a mix and match uh, and I do understand your constraint that if you are not from the domain you are trying to see well how does it work for my domain and so on. So I will suggest two solutions two possible solutions here one is that whatever examples we have uh, we will uh, we'll try to post them on Moodle whatever examples we have and secondly whatever the other thing you can do is on Google there are several examples that people have created. So if you Google for Bloom's taxonomy sub topic name such as suppose I say Bloom's taxonomy solar system you will get somebody would have written it. If you give a very specific topic perhaps nobody has done it but if you say Bloom's taxonomy questions civil engineering it is very likely that you will get a you will get some examples. We have a lot of examples in uh, electrical and computer engineering we also have some in mechanical chemistry physics and biology we have some. So we will try to upload at least one example of each but Google also helps in this regard. So the last exercise for you is I will explain this and then I will discuss the logistics is for you to actually choose a topic in your own course and you have seen now what should be the resolution how big the topic should be do not choose the entire subject as the topic but choose the topic as logic gates maybe at a module level uh, choose it as, manif as uh, machining so what the question says is choose a topic that you would need two or three or four classes to teach and write assessment questions one in each Bloom's level starting from recall. So what you would need to do is actually write six assessment questions. In order to do so these action verbs will help so all the action verbs are present on the next slide. You can as Mrinal mentioned use this as a guide sometimes a question like compare can be at understand level and sometimes it can be at evaluate level it depends on what are all the operations a student has to do to answer that question. So if it says compare and contrast living and non-living beings all that the student has to do is remember the properties of living beings and remember the properties of non-living beings that only makes it an understand level question because the student is simply remembering some properties. But if it says compare the function of some complicated system versus the function of another system then the student has to analyze the internals of each system do some calculation apply something and in which case it can be an evaluate level question. So action verbs help use them as an indicator when you frame your own question but also look at what are the operations a student needs to do to answer these questions. So logistically what you would do is find a partner from your domain and if you both teach the same subject it is great. Cho then 
choose a topic in that subject or at least choose a topic that you both are comfortable with and write assessment questions one by one use action verbs make sure that the questions are in the same topic so don't go across topics too much and you can do this activity in your lab because we have created a Moodle assignment called create questions for all blooms levels so you can go now have tea proceed to the lab and do this activity and this is really we are now moving into the next big phase of our workshop where all of you will be contributing towards creating community resources. So one big goal of this entire eight week workshop is that at the end we have several resources in terms of questions, in terms of uh, instructional strategies, several educational resources that all of us can use. So this is one such resource that you will be creating when you do this exercise.